Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here, my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping today. They're going to go out, see if things come out today, see if things are on sale. I know that today, you know, the big release that comes out today is Cars 3. I know there's going to be a number of different, you know, retail exclusive editions of that one that comes out today. I believe there's going to be a Steelbook and a couple other ones for that as well. Also at Walmart, since it's the first Tuesday of the month, they always change out the actual section and get in a bunch of more like indie horror titles and some comedies, a bunch of more obscure kind of releases. So definitely going to check out the section. Hopefully I don't have to go to a bunch of different Walmarts to try and find this stuff because sometimes Walmart doesn't you know have everything put out So hopefully I don't have to do that also today too um, I, At the beginning of the month the Criterion sale had just started So definitely gonna head to a Barnes & Noble to see kind of what they have on sale and There's one specific thing that I want to try and find there So hopefully I can find that also though at the end of this video I'm gonna have a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews and stuff like that So definitely stay tuned for that you know for some stuff I received to review and talk about for you guys also gonna go to a thrift store and a couple other places as well. I'm gonna try and go to a bunch of different spots today. But anyway though guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And hopefully in here they have everything put out because the last couple weeks in Target, for some reason, like I've gotten here and like the stuff has not, you know, been out in the shelves, the new releases. And it seems like it gets put out much later. And even in the comments, a lot of people were saying that it seems like Target's putting the stuff out in the shelves a lot later. So hopefully the stuff's out. And I do see the standee out for Cars 3. And their edition here of Cars 3, they had this exclusive 32 page storybook edition here of this one. It's like a, some kind of I think this is what they usually have for the Disney releases. It's a much thicker case and it's like a story inside here. And that one is $28.99 it looks like for this, you know, the exclusive one. And then their 4K edition here of that one is uh, $29.99. The standard edition uh, Blu-ray is $24.99. And then over here in the section though, I'm pretty much like the only other big release that came out today was the Glass Castle. And I reviewed this one recently. Really like this one. Thought this one was really, really well well done. Definitely one, you know, it's, it's kind of a sad story though about Brie Larson's character looking back on her life with her family and her family kind of always moving around and never really had like a house they were always in. They were kind of like always squatting in houses and stuff. But, you know, actually it was a really, really good movie though. It kind of had some mixed opinions, but I actually really like this one a lot and also a different kind of role for Woody Harrelson, I thought. I thought he did a really great job in this one. Other than that in here though, I don't think there's really too much else in here. I know though TV wise, and I'm going to talk about this at the end of the video, uh, The Crown, the complete first season, that one released. They don't seem to have put out yet the Westworld ones. They have like the 4K one here for $49.99. That was like in that cool like steelbook kind of case, steel kind of case. But that one doesn't seem to be put out yet. But other than that though, that seems to be all of the major things that are in here today. It was kind of funny in there, like the guy that works in Target, because I was like talking about this stuff and saying, I don't think some of the stuff was out yet. Then he's like, oh, uh, uh, because like I always notice you're like talking to yourself in here. Are you talking to somebody? I said, oh, I know I talk about new releases and stuff. He's like, oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Sometimes the things aren't out yet. And so, so I guess like all the times that I'm in there saying like, you know, all the things aren't, <laughs> haven't been put out yet and stuff, the guy has always been hearing that. I never even noticed, because sometimes when I'm showing the stuff on the shelves, like the guys that work there are like, two feet away that's why sometimes I kind of mumble and say things kind of strange because like people are right next to me and like I guess they, the guy had been noticing that I'm always saying oh the things aren't out yet and stuff so all that time he's been noticing that so it's kind of funny and it's kind of a weird conversation into Barnes and Noble we go yeah but everything in here though is 50% off so I have to see if I can find any of the decent ones. The one thing I'm trying to find in here is that David Lynch one. It's like an interview thing that he did. And there's like one or two other ones I was going to look at as well. In like a couple months though, there's some really cool stuff coming out for Criterion though. They're putting out like The Breakfast Club. And it's going to have like an hour and something of like never before seen deleted scenes and stuff. So I definitely can't wait to see, you know, what those things are. Because as far as I know, they've never on any release in the past on DVD or Blu-ray or anything included those deleted scenes. But you know, usually these ones here, since they're 50% off, they end up being like $20. And the David Lynch one, I think, is only supposed to be like um, $15 because that one's normally like $30. So I have to see if I can find those ones. And if there's any other ones, though, guys, that you recommend I pick up, though, let me know in the comments and stuff. I got this one the last time for the sale, this Lost in America one. But like I said, I'm just going to pretty much look through here and see if I can find anything interesting here. 
me know for the sale going on. I think it goes till the end of this month. I'm not 100% certain though how long it goes. Let me know if you guys know how long it goes to in the comments as well. Cause like I, I'm pretty sure though it's all of November, at least from what I've heard. And you know, I'm saying how long it goes to, it actually says right here till the 30th. But I found the one David Lynch thing here, but online it said they had the Blu-ray, but I'm only seeing the DVD of this one. So I'll have to look around in here though and see if I can find it. But one of the other things I was kind of looking at too, because it kind of looked like an like an interesting one, was this one, uh, Vampire. It looked like kind of an interesting movie here. Like from 1932, but looked like a really weird, strange movie. This is another one that I was kind of looking at, but the main one that I really really wanted to try and find though was the David Lynch thing so I'll have to see if I can find that anywhere in here yeah well I poked around there and looked and I think you know somebody might have had it like on hold or something because I looked through every area that they had the criterions was a number of different spots and couldn't find that David Lynch blu-ray anywhere so I might end up going to another one but we still should see you know another location but we shall see into big lots we go and in here though they definitely did get in a bunch of new blu-rays and stuff like this is kind of a weird edition here of better call Sal on uh, the complete first season I've never actually seen this edition here with this cover like this so this is kind of cool they have like the blacklist for for eight dollars here breaking bad season five for eight dollars so definitely did get in a bunch of new different things and this i never even remember seeing this mash steelbook here for five dollars uh cloudy with a chance of meatballs two for five dollars so they definitely did get in a bunch of new stuff in here sorry there's a lot of talking and stuff but you know and this one this has this great line in this this movie when this kid's like that's him that's pop he's very nice and i i, I always say that that's him that's pop line <laughs> one of my favorite movie lines ever is the thing this kid says because it's just the way he said it in his delivery was so like ridiculous and stuff three days to kill in here for five dollars so let's see if there's any other stuff it looks like they did get some christmas movies out in here as well the one thing i've always tried to find in here and i saw you know pictures of it a couple months back but never saw it in the store was that freaks and geeks the complete series for only um five dollars i think it was five dollars or something like that on blu-ray which was like an amazing price but never actually did you know see that in person and they also got a bunch more tv stuff as well over here like a uh, new girl a bunch of seasons of rest and development some family guy some futurama ones the shield this is one that i hope at some point they put on blu-ray because i definitely would like to see the show again and I, I think i saw something about a blu-ray of this that might be coming out down the line walter goggins this is like one of his early things that show Show, Vice Principals though that he's on if you guys haven't watched that it's only gonna be a two season show you know it's just about the air of the final episode but that show is amazing that's probably one of my favorite like comedies next to Curb which just came back Curb Enthusiasm but Vice Principals it's turned into such a dark the so the whole subject of the show but such an amazing show uh, and this movie was kind of cool too I remember this one called Phantom with David the Coveney I think I remember kind of liking this one but definitely did like I said change out this section here and finally got tons of new stuff but nothing really that different that I don't have but still cool to see though that they finally have you know updated the stock in here with new stuff and this past weekend I saw two different films. The first one I saw was Bad Moms Christmas. And I, I didn't even absolutely love the last Bad Moms. I thought it was okay. But this one I thought was a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, it was, this, uh, it was time it was set during Christmas and like the moms, actual mothers came into town and they were all kind of having problems with their mothers and family stuff going on. And they were all kind of tired of like dealing with Christmas kind of stuff. And it's interesting though how all these Christmas movies though are coming out now in November. Because like um, they're also releasing next week uh, that Daddy's Home 2 and you know last time when that released the first film that came out I think on Christmas Day so it's kind of weird seeing these Christmas movies coming out in November I feel they're coming out like a little bit early the other one I saw was the Colin Farrell uh, Nicole Kidman film um, you know Killing of a Sacred Deer that movie was so weird and so interesting, though. I really liked that a lot. The director also made the movie The Lobster, which I still need to watch that movie. But this movie was a total throwback to a Stanley Kubrick-styled film, especially to the look with the music and then, like, the cinematography with these super high shots and stuff of The Shining. It totally had The Shining kind of vibe, especially the music and the shots. And it's Colin Farrell is this doctor who becomes friends with this really strange kid, and you kind of find out about how he knows this kid, 
But then, like, when he becomes friends with him, strange things start to happen with his family and stuff. It's an exceptionally strange, gloomy movie, but so well done. Uh, the You know, the really big movie that came out this weekend, though, I still have to see is Thor Ragnarok. But for some reason, though, when it comes to, like, the Marvel movies and, like, the standalone ones as well, the Thor movies are never as interesting. I feel like I didn't love the four, first Thor movie, but I feel like they, the other one was better. But I don't know what it is when it comes to these, the Marvel ones, the Thor ones, I'm not as interested in. I definitely will see it, though, because it really has gotten really good reviews, though. But let me know in the comments, though, what you guys, you know, saw this weekend and what you guys, if you guys saw any of those movies as well. Into the Valley Thrift Store we go. And it's been like well over a month or so since I've been in here and they have definitely totally like got tons of stuff in here because there's even stuff down on the bottom the bottoms all filled up and over there too out the show those they have a bunch of like looks like sealed VHS tapes and stuff so that's kind of weird to see a bunch of sealed ones at least it looks like it we're gonna have to go through here but this is definitely the busiest thrift store on the planet like I had to drive around 10 minutes to try and find a spot this kind of a Cool set here. I think most of these have, I believe, been on Blu-ray, but you don't see this too often. This Vincent Price set here. It's a little bit beat up on the side a little bit with the tape and stuff, but four dollars for this, that's a pretty decent price for that. You always see tons of shoes all over the place in here though, but definitely, like I said, full up here of stuff here, but we're gonna look through here and see, you know, what's in here different today. It seems like too a lot of TV shows as well. And I showed this that mash one in um, you know Big Lots, and it's surprisingly I don't think I've ever actually watched a full episode of Mash. Like I know I've seen like clips, but never a full one. This is kind of interesting to see brand because this one just came out. I don't you know it's the, only the DVD, but still for two dollars that's a definitely a good price for that. This is one too. I hope at some point this finally gets a Blu-ray release. I always really liked this movie, and I've always had, to me, like, I, I love the music in this. It always felt like kind of music that didn't totally fit to the movie. It sort of seemed like something that was like would be like a weird late-night skip, like Cinemax kind of movie music, but it, it fit in a weird way to this, but I always loved that movie. But like I said, just gonna look through here though and see what we can find today. I remember liking this one too, this one, Evil in the Woods. That was kind of cool. And this is a Jack Frost 2 here. This one, I think, I think at one point was out of print, but now I think it's kind of more common. But hopefully this, the second movie gets a Blu-ray release because Vinegar Syndrome put out the first movie a couple months back though. But like I said, definitely a whole lot to sort through. I'll show though any interesting ones I come across. And here's the VHS's in here, and they aren't actually sealed, though. I think there are some down there that are. They're kind of like, you know, cut on the bottom like this. It's kind of a fun movie, 18 again. But cool to see all these tapes in here. These are definitely were not in here last time. And some kind of, a couple of different kind of random ones in here as well. But down here, all these Disney ones are actually still sealed. So this is kind of cool, like Bambi, Oliver and Company, Mary Poppins, and you still see like, you never see these too often. Like they have like all the stickers and stuff still on them. And that original thing that was on the bottom of the Disney tapes, and I always used to, you know, you peel off to open them. The Parent Trap, Rescuers, uh, Sound of Music, Beauty and the Beast, Peter Pan. See, it has another thing on here, like, a safe you know, coupon. These are definitely cool to see. This has like one of the original prices on it. Two thumbs up. A thing here, five dollar refund for Pillsbury. I mean, these are really cool to see. You never see them with these things still on them. This one, the Black Cauldron, free limited edition CD-ROM. This one, I don't think this has ever come to Blu-ray, I don't think. And this is one of those movies that always had like some stuff it was always like randomly edited and because like I think like Disney didn't like the original one because it was kind of too dark and stuff um, you know the content to it uh, the King of Thieves here so these are definitely cool like you never really see these Disney ones sealed and they're two dollars for these so that's kind of cool though but I was in there looking through all the you know the DVDs and stuff trying to see if I found anything out of print or different and it was a lot of you know a couple different things sort of but nothing really random or out of print or anything but definitely was kind of cool though to see all those Disney tapes sealed because like I said you don't really see that too often I can't remember the last time I really saw that many you know actual VHS's of Disney still sealed like that so that was definitely pretty cool. Into the second Barnes and Noble we go.
Hopefully this location though has that David Lynch thing in here though, that David Lynch uh, interview documentary thing. Yeah, in this location though, I see this one right here and they have a whole bunch of copies of it. So I'm definitely gonna get this one, this one David Lynch, The Art of Life though. And I'll see if they have that vampire one because I might get that one as well. Yeah, so I ended up getting that David Lynch thing. They didn't actually have that vampire one. It was funny. The other one had the vampire one and not the David Lynch Blu-ray. This one had the David Lynch Blu-ray and not the vampire one. But I don't know too much about that movie. If you guys think it would be one I should definitely pick up, let me know and I'll try and get it like next Tuesday. Go back to the other location and, and get that one. And let me know any other Criterion ones, like I said, that you know are worth you know picking up or anything. Because like there's a lot of other ones that came out recently that I know that I haven't seen. I think there was like an Alfred Hitchcock one, Rebecca was one I haven't seen. So let me know though below so but definitely though glad I was able to find this one in there though into Walmart we go and they have these ones in here which are like for the holidays like done in these kind of gift kind of things where you can kind of like sign the front like to and from they seem to be a lot of you know paramount titles like some of the more recent ones like ghost in the shell uh rings this is kind of a funny one though norbert like i don't know so many because some people like really hate this movie i always loved this movie i know it was like totally ridiculous but it was always to me kind of a fun movie you seem to be only like i said the dvd editions of these and they're all like 588 and the newer ones are 988 but I've got to cross my fingers and hope, you know, that they've changed out the actual section of the movies and stuff. So let's hope all the new stuff is put out. But in here, though, it seems like they put all this stuff out. Their 4K here is $27.96. And then their edition here, you know, exclusive edition of, you know, Cars 3. It's like only at Walmart and it's like, it says it includes three short films. I guess those are the exclusive ones because I believe there's one short film on the regular stand standard Blu-ray. I think it's, so I guess it's like two different ones on this that are like extra ones on this release here I believe because it, and it might be an, a different cover on that as well I'm not 100% certain though and then like uh, Westworld this is the one the big one that came out today the 4k release and that's $44.96 for this and this cool kind of metal steel kind of case thing and the standard uh, blu-ray edition here of that one is a uh, $39.96 other than that though uh, this uh, one this anime came out today called your name uh, the crown here uh, is uh, $29 96 and then overdrive release as well you know the scott eastwood film this one was actually kind of fun it's kind of a similar movie to like the um the fast and furious movies and then this movie released so i talked about recently and i really like this movie called the show it was like a reality tv show where people went on there and like committed suicide on the show and to win money for their families kind of a shocking kind of concept but pretty well done though and this one released today this one called 2307 winter's dream it says it's like mad max on ice i don't know much about this one at all i have to definitely have to read into this one if you guys have seen this one let me know how this one is and then the other one today was like the limehouse um the Limehouse Gollum, which I, I talked about this recently as well. This is actually kind of a cool movie. Uh, Olivia Coke, I always have been a fan of her stuff, and Bill Nye was in this. Uh, Bill Nye, I never say his name right, but kind of like a mystery type murder mystery show, or murder mystery film. But then over here, though, in the section, though, um, they did change out the stuff in here. So I think like some of the new things in here. Um, they only seem to have the DVD of this was Ingrid Goes West. And this was, you know, uh, Albie Plaza and Elizabeth Olsen. And Albie Plaza plays this woman, like, obsessed with uh, Elizabeth Olsen, who's like an Instagram kind of star. And I actually like this one, but like I said, they only seem to have the... Um, DVD of that and another great thing that came out today and I doubt it's gonna to be too many places was a movie called Patty Cakes That was like probably one of my favorite movies this year and I believe this one was today this one Ice Below Zero. I believe this was one of the releases today. Uh, this movie called Skybound um, released as well. Uh, Darkness Rising came out from, you know, this is a, a Shout Factory title. This one here called Mother Krampus released. Uh, this one Demon Hole and I think this is like a sci-fi channel movie, this one called Dead Still with Ray Weiss. This one released. So a bunch of different stuff in here that came out. I think this one was today, this movie called Road. And then I think other than that though, those are like the main things in here that I'm noticing. And these ones too, they come with like bonus movies in here as well. And I don't know if these are movies that have been released by Echo Bridge in the past or they're all new movies on this one. But other than that though, that seems to be all the major things in here I see today. 
And the only thing I ended up getting in there was this one that's a questionable cover to this one called Demon Hole. But it, I don't know, it's, it, I read the back of it and it actually sounds kind of interesting. It's like a Native American barrel ground, like weird things happen. So I don't know, it sounded kind of cool. And you know, Echo Bridge has not released stuff in a long time. They finally came back and you know, started releasing stuff. And, and it has like two bonus things on here as well. But you know, who knows about this one? And like I said, the one big thing that I feel like not many people are gonna have is that Patty Cakes movie though. That was a really good movie though. You guys definitely should check that one out. But it seems like it's like really expensive online though. Into Best Buy we go. And in here in Best Buy, they have an exclusive edition of Westworld here. This Steelbook one, only it's uh, Best Buy Steelbook. So that's pretty cool. That one's $39.99 for the Steelbook. It doesn't look like they, they have an exclusive 4K Steelbook, though, because this 4K Steelbook, though, is pretty much is, you know, is everywhere. It's, you know, the general release one. But their edition of that one is $44.99 for that one as well in here. And they have a stand up here for, you know, Cars 3. And they have in here the exclusive, you know, only a Best Buy steelbook of that one here. So, yeah, so Best Buy is the one that has the steelbook. So, like I said, there was, definitely was a bunch of different uh, editions of that one. It looks like the steelbook here is $22.99 for that. The general, you know, Blu-ray is $19.99. And then the 4K here is $27.99 for that one. And they have this one in here as well for $14.99, the show. And that haunting, I mean, the Lake House Golem here, that one. $19.99 but over here on the other side though I saw um, they released today all the other Harry Potter movies on uh, 4k those are all $27.99 for those ones it was the first four films because I think they released the last four like uh, a couple months back so now the fir first four have now all been released on uh, 4k here other than that though I don't see anything else in here too different in here today it seems to be all the major things in here that I can see. I don't really see anything else over here that I can, as far as I can tell. So anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here from Shop Factory Screen Factory line is the Paul Nache Collection 2. Uh, volume 1 of the films that Paul Nache acted in, I believe in the past set, there was a couple of them that he directed as well. That came out a couple months back. Really, really cool collection as well. Paul Nache, you know, was from Spain and he acted in all these different kind of films playing like creatures, werewolves, uh, Dracula, monsters, all these different kind of characters. It was always kind of considered kind of like Lon Chaney, where he would play all these type of monster roles. And these are some actually pretty cool films. This set here includes five different films. Uh, Hunchback of the Morgue, uh, Dragonfly for each corpse, The Devil's Possessed, Exorcism, and The Werewolf and the Yeti. And this has on here a bunch of different new features on here. The Hunchback of the Morgue has a commentary track on here. Um, there's also a commentary track on Dragonfly for the corpse. Um, there's one on exorcism and it also includes like alternate versions of the film as well and then the werewolf, werewolf and the yeti has an um you know the uncut version of the film as well but all the films here look really really good really great transfers on all these ones um basically uh hunchback of the morgue is one about him playing like a hunchback of notre dame type character who's like obsessed with this woman who's sick uh dragonfly for each corpse is a giallo type film so it's like a murder mystery kind of film uh the devil's possessed kind of has the vibe of mark of the Dead. Devil. It's that sort of thing about like, um, devil worshiping and this like kind of like accusing people of that kind of stuff and he plays this kind of crazy kind of king type character who's like totally crazy uh, exorcism was done around the time of the exorcist so it's kind of him as a priest who's like exercising people that are possessed so there's some crazy exorcism type scenes in that one and werewolf and the yeti was him going and you know on an expedition because they believe they found the abominable snowman but a bunch of people you know scientists were who were looking for him first had gone missing so it's him going on the journey to try and find the abominable snowman but of course though he gets out there and some bad things happen to him and then has in here as well a booklet with you know some pictures from each film and some information about them as well so a really really cool set here and I feel like some really seldom seen films and each movie here as well is on its own uh, blu-ray disc for this set so definitely a cool set here of some really cool films uh, the next one here and this is one that I have been really waiting to see for a long time I remember seeing the 
trailer a couple different times in the theaters, you know, for the last couple years, and it, you know, had a lot of delays. So, so glad this movie has finally been released. And this is the Bella Thorne film that she stars in, Amityville: The Awakening. And I actually really like this. You know, it's actually the first like official Amityville film in a really, really long time. I like all the Amityville films and you know, Dollhouse and like, you know, a lot of the later sequels. And the thing that's kind of cool about this movie is it actually references the Amityville films. Because in one scene, uh, Bell, one of Bella Thorne's friends in the movie brings over the Amityville films and they watch them in the Amityville house. So it's kind of a cool aspect because you don't see that too often when they actually reference films about something in a movie, in, like in the horror movie. So it's kind of a cool aspect. But it's basically all about Bella Thorne and her family move into this house. And the one brother is in a coma and he was in a terrible accident. And, and he's there, you know, she's kind of, the mother is hoping, you know, that, um, you know, Jennifer Lation Lee plays her mother, is kind of hoping that the son, that maybe moving into this environment might help the son, and he might kind of come out of it, but right when they get there, you know, weird things start happening in the house, you know, they all start sort of seeing things, and just sort of the mother is acting really odd, and then everyone at school is looking at Bella Thorne's character really strange, because they know that she moved into this house, and they all know the history of it, so they're all kind of giving her all kinds of problems, and she didn't even know moving into this about the history, that's why throughout the movie, like, her friends are telling her about it and showing her the Amityville films, and it kind of freaks her out even worse, and, like, weird things start happening with the brother in the house, it's just a very, very creepy movie, and there's actually a couple scares in this movie that actually really, really work. I don't know, I just thought this was actually a really fun movie, and like I said, I'm so glad this movie has been finally released. It has on here, though, a making of on the film. Uh, the next one here, and this is one I didn't get to see in theaters, uh, the writer of this also wrote, um, Hell or High Water, and this movie is called Wind River, starring Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen. This is another one. This is a top recommendation movie. Like, and Nick Cave did the music in this, and like he did the music in a couple of different movies, like The Proposition. He did, this is probably some of my favorite. You know, he does a lot of you know songs and stuff like that. But this is my favorite when it comes to like film scores that he's done. This was amazing. His music in this. And it's basically about Jeremy Renner's character who uh, lives on an, an Indian reservation, and he goes there and kind of does. Um, like the Fish and Wildlife Preserve, so he has to kind of hunt if there's sort of dangerous animals that have been spotted on the reservation and things like that. But the one day he ends up finding this body of this woman on the reservation, and uh, Elizabeth Olsen's character is FBI who comes there and kind of try and investigate what happened. And and Jeremy Renner ends up working with her to try and figure out who killed this woman. So it's kind of like a mystery of like going around in this small village, and it's kind of all set in the snow, the terrible conditions and them trying to kind of put together the pieces of, you know, who killed this girl. And it's amazing setting for this because it's all in this really, you know, freezing snow everywhere, tundra. The setting, like I said, the music in this, performances in this were amazing. And it's kind of this whole thing about like who had killed this girl and it's kind of trying to put together the entire thing, but was so well done. Like I love this so much. The director also directed, and I didn't even realize this until I was looking him up, a um, horror movie that I really liked, a really low budget horror movie called Vile from like 2011 or 12 or something, but really cool movie as well that I really remember really liking. But this one was just so good. Definitely, if you guys have seen this one, let me know what you thought of this. But I love this one so much. Highly recommend it. Really well done in all aspects on here. It has on here, though, deleted scenes and some behind the scenes on this one as well. Uh, the next one here from Sony, and this is a TV series that airs on, um, I believe it's on Netflix, and it's a TV series called The Crown. This is all about... Um, this is, you know, Prince Elizabeth, you know, it was Princess Elizabeth, who was, you know, and now is still the Queen of England. And it's kind of about her when she just started out, early on when she was in, like, I think she was like 18 or 20, like really young. And it was her when she was getting married. And it's all about the stuff that was going on around that time and about her kind of coming into power. And, and it deals with all the stuff, like with her, like the the political kind of stuff that's going on in the family and all the kind of problems that they're having and the disagreements and the um, the king, you know, was really sick at this time as well. So it was all about him and kind of like knowing that, you know, he really wasn't going to, you know, had, you know, was not doing well because he was very sick and coughing up blood and all this kind of stuff. And the thing that's kind of cool about this show as well is on the details. The details of this were amazing. Like they really, you know, on everything with the sets and the costumes and everything was so well done, you know, with uh, in that aspect. That was one of the best aspects as was the details of how meticulous it was, you know, with all those aspects. But has on here, you know, the complete series of this one as well 
on this set. But, you know, definitely a pretty cool show here. Like I said, I believe this one is on Netflix, and this one includes a photo gallery as well, you know, feature-wise for this. On the next one, I just finished watching this, and this is um, from Sony as well. This is a movie called The Shadow Man. And this is, you know, they've done a couple of movies in the past, and, like, a, you know, it's you've kind of always heard about this character. It's about, like, you know, the hat man, like the character you see in a hat, in a hat like this creepy guy. They kind of like, you know, a dark figure kind of like a lot of times you have like visions of this person you have dreams and like it's about this woman who's like, you know, with her husband and she's continue you know she's kind of become like a shut in her house and she's not going anywhere because she's like having these horrible dreams all the time about this hat man and like she's like you know waking up in the middle of the night screaming having these like even when she's awake she starts kind of seeing things she has kind of visions of things that might happen in the future with her husband as well with this shadow creature and like and, and all aspects are kind of haunting her all the time so she's like doesn't do anything in the house she you know is this kind of like a whole wreck about this entire thing she's taking medication and then it's kind of about her trying to get to the bottom of this along with her husband trying to figure out exactly what is going on if there's any way to kind of stop these visions if there could like be something more to them so she starts going to like a meeting with other people who are kind of having the similar type situations but a pretty creepy thing here and some pretty creepy like dream type sequences of things when she's seeing the shadow man it has on here some commentary tracks as well as deleted scenes on this one here the next one I got here from Breaking Glass Pictures, and I put this, there's nothing bad on this cover, but I covered it just in case anyone says anything. It's these mannequins, and you know, because look, like, what is going on in these mannequins? But it's a movie called The Tormenting, and it's basically though about this, um, these people that end up moving into a facility that have, it's kind of like going to be like a um, healthcare kind of facility, and they're trying to move into this old building, and they're going to get like a really good deal for it. But like the second they get there, and there's this real funny guy in it that's like kind of like this is the way he's acting and stuff, and he's like, something weird happens to him. And he starts like choking in and he like sees something weird in the basement but they start to kind of realize though that this building there was like something happened with this girl in this building so the second they start like moving into this place weird things start to happen to all of them and like some weird stuff's going on so they're kind of trying to figure out exactly what had happened in this building and like why that they're sort of seeing the visions of this girl and if they kind of like you know they can figure out how to stop this because they kind of want to move into this place because it's like a really amazing deal but you know there's something strange going on like I said the one guy was very funny though like the way he was acting and the things that were happening to him like he was like the first guy that starts seeing like the ghosts and stuff in this one and then you start seeing these like kind of mannequin type characters you know which I had to cover over here but this has on here though a behind the scenes on this release the next one here uh the guys that produced this one sent this one and i talked about this as well in my last video this one is available in Redbox. that you know the u in the u.s dvd of this one is available in the red box but this is the uk release of this film so this one is a region uh two release so you guys have to make sure you have a region free uh dvd player for this one and it's a movie called unhinged and i really like this one like i said i like this one in the last video as well and this is you know a remake of a 70s film and I hardly remember the original film I remember liking it and I think there was a couple things kind of changed around with this one like modernized and stuff but it's about these friends who are getting ready to get married the one girl is getting ready to get married and they take the back road and end up you know kind of breaking down in the front of this one house and this is really weird woman this older woman in the house and the second they get in there strange things start to happen to them and they see someone wearing this mask you know and this wedding dress kind of coming after them and it's a real old school like throw back 80s style slasher film and the people kind of start getting killed in there and it's kind of like who is the killer i really i really like this one a lot very very you know like i said total throwback film and they sent over another film that they you know did as well called house on elm lake and this is another one that is a region uh you know uh to release as well it says region zero but it's in the pal format so you guys like i said it's another one you may have to make sure you have a you know all region dvd or blu-ray player to play this one as well this is house on the lake and this is in the beginning of this movie you see this one guy kind of like has his family tied up and he's going kind of crazy and he like believes like the devil had told him to like kill his family and it's about people that are moving into the new house it's another thing where they got like a really great deal in the house but right when they start getting in there though they kind of start cracking up and like it's like it's like what happened in the beginning of this movie going to happen again with these people because they all sort of start seeing things weird stuff starts happening they start really acting really strange so there's all this kind of crazy stuff going on in this house it's kind of like you know anytime you get into these kind of 
house with good prices and stuff, you know that there's something weird that had happened and it's not really going to be a good thing. But another one that was very cool as well. Uh, this one here is from a company called Cinele I think it's how you say this one is Cinelicious Les Lepolis Picks or Cinopolis. I, I can never say this right for sure. It's like Cinelicious Pictures, but it's a movie here called Funeral Parade of Roses. It also has some of the director's other uh, short films as well, but this is a brand new 4K transfer of the film. Uh, the movie looks amazing though. And this is a movie too that, um, Stanley Kubrick had talked about a lot um, that how it you know it inspired the, like kind of like the violence levels and the look of Clockwork Orange and this is all set in a very ahead of its time this is in the late 60s and I believe this was um, all talking about in um, I believe this was in Japan all about all of the kind of the gay culture and people who are transgender and um, the gay clubs and all that and it's all about kind of the stuff that was going on in Japan then. Like I said, very ahead of its time subject matter. And it's like, um, and it's done sort of like in some ways, like because there's some real violent stuff in this. But then there's like parts in here where it's like interviews. So it kind of almost makes it seem like it's a documentary, like talking to people at the clubs and like, you know, in Japan and stuff that are gay and, you know, transgender about like things. And like they definitely use some terms though in this that they would never use now. That's like different ways of describing things. So it's different watching this as well, hearing the way they would describe certain things, I'm like, well, they would not say it this way now. So it's very different, too, in, the, in that aspect. But really, really, you know, interesting movie here. And like I said, really great transfer, and also has a whole bunch of the director's uh, short films as well on this one here. The next one's here from Monarch Home Entertainment, are two different Christmas films. Uh, the first one is Married by Christmas. This is about a woman who you know, works at her family's business, and she has like a high position there. And it's kind of like, um, it ends up being something in the will that she finds out about where you know whoever gets married first like kind of takes over the business and like her sister is looking like she's going to be getting married first to this you know her new boyfriend and and she ends up you know this girl has them having to be like well I, I I can't have her like take over the whole business when she doesn't even really do anything in it and that's kind of what's going to happen unless she can find someone to marry before Christmas and like kind of beat the sister to it so it's kind of her about like going on dates and stuff trying to see if she can find you know Mr. Right in this short amount of time and all these kind of encounters and stuff and that that's essentially what it is but kind of a fun thing an interesting concept for one as well and the, the next one here is um a cinderella christmas and this is sort of a take on the cinderella story a little bit it's about these um these two cousins that work in their it's the um event planning business and they do like catering and all these different kind of things and they're like, um, they're the one's uh, uncle is getting ready to retire, and she's like, well, to her uncle, well, I I should take take over this business and like you know start to run the whole thing. And he's like, well, I know I'm going to give the businesses all to you and your cousin, and you guys are both going to be able to run these together. But the one one was like, well, I doesn't really want to have to work with her because she's always kind of taking the credit of everything she does and saying that she did it, and kind of like not really letting her have any credit for anything. They can kind of get along, but like not at the same time, not too much. She, she originally wanted to kind of buy the the uncle out but then it kind of turns out that the the cousin she's like well I'll let you have these businesses but I want to be married and I you know and there's this like big ball kind of party that they were throwing and like they get like the one cousin gets an invite to it and she's like well if I can find Mr. Wright you know um you know I'll give you the business but of course though the cousin gets sick so the cousin has to go she has to end up going in place of her cousin and she goes to the ball wearing the costume contest mask and she ends up meeting this guy and he kind of falls in love with her like Cinderella style and it's kind of like well is she gonna like tell this guy that it was her that she met or pretend like it was the cousin who was sick and wasn't there so then she gets married to him and then then she can get the business that she wants so it's kind of a whole thing going on here but kind of a fun movie here and the next one's here I want to let you guys know uh, this company sent over some steelbooks to let you guys know about it's from a website called High Def Ninja and they sell on there they you know they do movie reviews and stuff like that as well on the website but they have a bunch of different um, steelbooks you guys can order like steelbooks from them. They have a store on there. They have some exclusive steelbooks, uh, exclusive versions of some steelbooks. Uh, they have like the ones you can get at Best Buy, Target, all that kind of ones that they sometimes sell out and stuff in the stores. And they have them on there to buy and you, you know you get the discs and everything. And they sent over a few ones to show you guys. They sent over uh, the Baby Driver uh, steelbook and I believe this was the 4K one. They don't have the discs in these ones but when you order them though from them they have the actual discs. And then I think, th I believe this was uh, the original Spider-Man here with 
Tobey Maguire. And um, I think this was The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm pretty sure this was, I think. So like I said, this one so that you guys know about these ones. And if you guys are interested in steelbooks and, you know, buying steelbooks and stuff like that, you can get them from uh, highdefninja.com. Uh, and I'll put a link for that as well. And before we go, though, I had a few other things I wanted to show. Uh, this one website called The Alien Bee, they have some pins available. I believe they're going to have some shirts as well, but they do a lot of movie reviews and that kind of stuff. And they sent over their pin, and their website, though, is Alien Bee. I'll put a link, though, below for this. And we're also going to take a look, though, at the BAM box, because I was really behind on these, and I have two different ones to show the last two months of these ones. And I'll put a link as well for the BAM box if you guys are interested in signing up for these. So let's see what's in these two boxes here. Uh, the first thing here, and here is like a medallion. What is this? Um, I have to look up what some of these things are. It looks almost like the thing from the Goonies, but I know that's not what it is. But there's always a booklet in here that shows what everything is. A Space Ghost pin here. A Watchman uh, patch. This is some kind of like a Deadpool. Oh, like a Deadpool hoodie type thing. It looks like, yeah, like a Deadpool hoodie mask thing. So that's pretty cool there. And then it usually has autographs and stuff in here. It's a print here. Um, what is this from? The Art of Logan, L Logan Pack here from the show to Defenders, I believe. And an autograph from, um, so who's this from here? This is from the band box and signed by Brian Hearing. I guess, I think he was like the voice of BB, you know, BB-8, I think, here. This was the September one. It shows, though, what everything is. And there's, like, different types of Space Ghost pins. Sometimes they have, like, oh, yeah, well, that was from the Goonies. That's what it looked like. But I felt like it looked a little different in that, like like more of a key look. But, no, that's, I, I thought that's what it was. Yeah, you see, like, a replica mask of uh, Deadpool. And in here, in the October one, I don't know what this one is for. This is, like, um... Looks like it's Sarah Michelle Gellar. No, you know, this is, yeah, Buff, Buffy the Vampire Slayer here. And then there's a little box thing here. Let's see what this is. Some kind of a, like a little, like, key-type necklace thing that kind of comes out like a switchblade. A um, license plate here. I don't know what, what this one is. Like I said, I'm going to have to look up what these are. A print here, an Edward Scissorhands type print. This is like um, 186 of one, uh, 1,200 for this. That's a pretty cool print. And an autograph here this time. Oh, this is pretty cool. Zach Galligan, you know, from the uh, Gremlins autograph. I don't think I actually had him ever sign anything. I talked to him. I don't think so. I had him sign, you know, I interviewed him in like one of the convention videos a while back. But I don't think I ever had anything actually signed by him. But you see, like, there's, yeah, the Buffy pins and, like, um, some of these ones here are limited. And this is a pin here for the show. I mean, a patch for the show. Fringe. This is a key of seven Dark Matters prop. I don't know what this is a prop from, but they also have, like, these are some of the alternate uh, things that he signs for um, the Gremlins as well. And these are Evil Dead so that license plate was the Evil Dead license plate. So that's pretty cool. They also have some inter alternate versions of the, um, you know, uh, Everett Scissorhands ones as well. So pretty cool here. Like I said, just a little look at the BAM boxes here.